Well, damn. I dropped a video yesterday. Uh, it's part two of the breakdown. Bud Crawford, Errol Spence Jr. Uh, and the comments went crazy. So in this video, uh, I'm going to address some of the best comments because they're all pretty damn good. But I wanted to speak to some of them. This is your boy, JG. This is a punch report. We gonna get right into it right here, right now. Now, here is a disclaimer. I do have one more video breaking down the upcoming bout. Errol Spence Jr., Terrence Bud Crawford. Um, this is not that video. Um, I am going to leak a little bit of information, but I'm not going to get too far into details about my thoughts on the outcome of the video and how that fight's going to end up playing out because that is the third video on my channel. As you guys know, if you haven't, if you're newer or you just saw the first couple of videos that I've posted, I give the full detailed breakdown, but I also talk about how I think the fight's going to play out. The comparisons go away. The guys that they fought otherwise go away. How the fight's going to break down between the two combatants, I cover that and I give my prediction. As, as you may also know, um, if you've been here before, and what you'll learn is, I don't mince words, I don't ride the fence. If I'm going to say that Golovin's going to beat Murata by stopping TKO, I mean that, and it plays out. If I say that, you know, your Dennis Ugas is going to get punished, get turned into a heavy bag, I did that video February 12th of this month, and I, and I put my name on that right off rip. February 12th, check the video out. I did three or four more videos providing explanation as to why I feel like the fight was going to play out that way, and now we have the result in hand. But for this video specifically, let's just get into some of the comments. First and foremost, shout out to all of you guys, uh, the new subscribers, the returning viewers. It's been love. Let's just keep it going. So this is a great comment. Um, and for some of the longer comments, I'm just going to summarize. Uh, Andre Edwards essentially makes a comment talking about how Bud Crawford gets a lot of cre credit for stopping Errol, Sp or excuse me, stopping um, Sean Porter, and Spence doesn't get the same credit for stopping your Dennis Ugas, both fighters who have not ever been stopped before in the career uh shout out to juice lee first of all that's a dope handle um juice lee ad addresses this pretty well he talks about the difference in the losses between the two fighters but more importantly i wanted to add context we have to look at the fact that who did sean porter lose to leading up to the errol spence fight and we already know he lost to bud crawford he lost to undefeated um my man from sheffield uh kel brook that's before the golovkin loss uh when he went up and weighed that was dumb he lost to him he lost to Keith Thurman. He lost, we know he lost to Errol Spence, and he lost to Bud Crawford. Those are his losses. Now, for my money, though, I think that Danny Garcia beat him, and I think that uh, your Dennis Ugas beat Sean Porter. But when you have those four confirmed losses on your resume and the guys that you did beat along the way, that's much more notable than uh, your Dennis Ugas. We know he now has lost to uh, Sean Porter and most recently Errol Spence Jr. But before that, Unless you really study the sport of boxing, I would challenge anyone, if you're willing to be honest, do you know who your Dennis Ugas lost to before those fights? Now, if you're a huge fan of the Cuban school of boxing, maybe you know. But by and large, I know the average or even above average boxing fan does not know that he lost two fights in a row, left the sport, lost at 140 pounds to Amir Aman, uh, American boxer. He just pretty much lost to a guy with a slick jab that was tall and had good footwork. But... Um, that's why you can. That's why you see Bud Crawford get the love that he gets for stopping Sean Porter because he's tried and true, tested former champion. Um, you know, he got he has a win in the amateurs, I believe, over Alexander Usyk. I think he was fighting like at 160 pounds, Sean Porter. So he just has a lot of meat to his name and how he gets down, and that's why it gets the credit that I I feel like, in my opinion, it deserves. That was a great question. Good, great shout out. Great, uh, great uh, tagline with Juice Lee uh, or uh, handle. That's dope. Uh, moving on. Um, uh, shout out for identifying it with Juice Lee again that his mouth guard came out in the Van Heerden fight. I actually wasn't aware of that, but I obviously identifies a problem uh, with the mouth guard. We talked about it yesterday. We can't make those critical errors in a fight against a guy like Bud Crawford. You'll get fucked up. Let's go. Oh, this is a good one. S1 Dove, shout out to you 14 hours ago. Arrow bent over at the waist for Ugas is because he used his right hand and shoulder to pin Ugas's arm and gloves in the high guard to his head. We talked about that, I believe, two videos ago. Errol Spence's utilization of inside fighting and creating leverage. We got into that. More specifically to the point I was making is you can't do that at mid-distance range. So if you're trying to really get the left hand off and you're overextending on that shot, it's way too easy to counter you. Arrow fell victim or was susceptible to that. Um, against the Uga and against Ugas, but Ugas lived so much in the high guard, Errol wasn't really even provided the opportunity to make that mistake over and over again. Against Danny Garcia, who moves way better and tries to utilize his jab more, 
and be more of a pot shotter, more of a sharpshooter kind of fighter, Errol Spence was in that position where he was at middle distance reaching over for the left hand, which would be my right hand as an orthodox fighter. Um, so that's all I was just kind of alluding to against Crawford, who we saw highlight and illustrate this against Crawford, or excuse me, against Porter. If you get too far over your front foot and your weight distribution is off, you can get countered and stopped. But that's a great comment and a great observation. And it's just more of the nuance in what we, when we talk about these fighters and we do these breakdowns. This is why I love engaging with the guys who guys and gals who watch my videos and leave comments because it does provide different perspectives and for me the opportunity to come in, clean up a mistake I may have made or just kind of highlight may have more of what I was trying to address. So shout out to S1 Dubs. Uh, let's go. Um, this is another good one, Banks Law. A uh, great breakdown in my opinion. I can't see EJ throwing that many punches. I would say off rip, I have to see that first before I say it's not going to happen. So my bare minimum is going to be 713 punches for Earl Spence Jr. If the if fight gets done, they fight, he will at a minimum throw 713 punches. I'm willing to put a lot on that. Regardless if he gets, or the outcome, if he just gets carved up and, and uh, Crawford, he's just too much, too slick, too savvy. Regardless of what Crawford does, the output will be in the neighborhood of 700 punches. Um, their style, Spence, uh, he's not, okay. Bud has more tools than Spence, so a firefight is not a bad thing. I don't know if you're going to see this video, but I would challenge you to say what tools additionally does Bud have that Errol Spence doesn't. I know there are different style fighters, but I'm going to leave that to you or anyone else who sees this video. What's the tool that Bud Crawford has that Errol Spence flat doesn't have? And when I talk about a firefight, we have evidence now. We have enough data and information out there that says if you let Errol Spence punch on you, he might not knock you out. But you're definitely going to be changed after the fight. So when I say I don't think a firefight is the best thing for Bud Crawford, I think that he might run into durability issues. And I feel like this is not the fight where you try to prove who you are as a man against a guy that's a notable, damaging, transformative power puncher like Errol Spence Jr. So that's more, more what I'm alluding to. I think that, and I'm getting a little bit ahead, I think that, yeah, there are spots where Bud Crawford can really be slick and savvy and make it hard for Errol Spence. But I'm going to save that for the next video. But... Just going in there blow for blow with Spence? No, nah, I, 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 I'm not telling you right now. That's that's not going to be the ticket. Um, but still, dope comment. Um, high volume or pressure fighters, he destroys Horn, Khan, Porter. Khan uh, is a slick boxer. He's not a pressure fighter. He has zero chin. He got stocked easy. Jeff Horn is none of those things. He's just a big, strong dude from Australia. Um... I don't, I don't know. Porter is the de definition of what you're describing. High volume, high pressure. Maybe not volume, but lots of pressure. Because if you take a look at Sean Porter's punch stats, he doesn't register above 500, like barely above 500 per fight. But we already know he's in your face constantly, bullying you, using football tactics, like Errol says, and just making it difficult. And he had success against, um, he had success against uh, Bud Crawford. But when Bud Crawford was able to kind of nullify that pressure and keep Sean Porter at mid-distance range, I'm going to put the clip in here because it's crazy, you just start seeing, seeing Sean just get hit. Like, Kate, like he was just whooping his ass after that whole, you know, Sean, to, and for me, Sean really controlled the majority of that fight. He did an outstanding job. Bud just took his time, stayed patient, figured him out, and just started beating his ass. But great comment. Counterpunchers like, counter like to counter, so the punch is thrown uh essentially will provide more opportunity to counter absolutely but i'm okay i'm gonna let you guys in on a little secret i'm gonna give you a little bit of my breakdown right now for the upcoming fight how things gonna play out errol spence jr terrence bud crawford has the makings to be one of the most boring fights you've ever seen that's the preview I'm gonna, now don't don't get crazy but that's the preview i'm gonna let you in on it. it has the makings all the makings to be one of the most boring fights you've ever seen i can't wait to break it down for you guys shout out to banks law Moving right along. Oh man, General Long, this was just an hour ago. When you said it's hard to find flaws in Bud, please stop. Dude's feet sloppy, he drags his back foot horribly, and his guard is weak. When he jabs, he lifts his back foot a lot. Okay, um, I think those are fair assessments. I can't say I've made similar observations. The style that Bud Crawford typically fights with, like I said before, he struggles to get offense on his own. He relies solely on setting traps, allowing you to make the mistake and then countering you and making you pay. Um, with that said, some of that stuff is on purpose or deliberate. 
he's never going to close a distance real strong like that initially unless he's got you hurt then you definitely know you're gonna, you're gonna get hammered but before that he's trying to bait his opposition and i don't know why they always go for it into coming in initiating the battle and then making him pay for it um the video that i did yesterday highlighted one fatal flaw for each fighter um that's not to say they don't make other mistakes we understand that they do but the things that i feel like will get them in trouble right we talked about it for errol spence jr you have to manage which way you're leaning don't overcommit on shots you'll get countered for bud crawford you don't need to be a tough guy and stop watching your work because guys can counter you over the top it's happened many times Kavioxis is a good example sean porter is a good example that's not to say they don't make other mistakes i'm trying to highlight the fatal flaws the things that when they run up against each other could cause legitimate problems that result in them getting stopped or embarrassed or something crazy like that but uh, that's my time i wanted to address those comments and show love where i could oh this is another good one only thing missing in the defensive is chin resistance enjoy the video i think these guys both have solid chins uh we've seen bud get hurt we've seen bud get hurt, hurt at 140 pounds to the chin we've seen errol spence get hurt um and put himself in precarious situations so maybe if he wasn't buzzed you're definitely looking at him like you know you can't make that mistake but we which we talked about yesterday um and more importantly when i think about chin resistance you might get buzzed or get hurt how do you respond and how quickly does it take for you to kind of get your bearings about you for both bud crawford and both errol spence are both both and both both these motherfuckers um i've seen them in precarious situations and immediately get it back and be effective so i think they'll be able to stand up to if they get clipped but if one lands a, a cool shot i fully expect the that individual who goes down or goes into the ropes or whatever to to come back because the kavioskas fight when Bud Crawford got rocked and hurt, he immediately gets it back. He struggles a little bit more. Eventually, he gets the stoppage. Uga Spence fight. Sixth round happens. It's confusing. Is he hurt? Is he not hurt? He ends up winning the rest of that round and then breaking his face in the seventh round. So we've seen how these guys respond when they had a, when they have to face adversity. So I think both of them rate pretty well in the chin category. Um, if I was going to pick someone to have a better opportunity of capitalizing on a chin shot, I'd probably favor Terrence Crawford because of his precision punching and some of the mistakes that uh, Errol Spence does tend to make. But yeah, I rate both of them from a chin perspective. But that's my time. Let me guys know what you think. Hey, keep the comments coming because this this is what makes this shit fun. We get to chop it up and have these conversations. If I missed you, my bad, but I read all the comments. I try to get to as many of them as I can. This one kind of blew up kind of quick. But uh, this is your boy, JG. This is the Punch Report. Like, subscribe, bell, icon for notifications. Can't wait to see this fight. We out.